Okay, hello everyone. This is our third episode of Yearbook News. I'm here again with Sarah and our guest star today, Destiny Garcia. Hi, Destiny. Would you Hi. be able to just um, give a few words about yourself and your experience as a, a yearbook advisor? Yes, I'm Destiny Garcia. It's my third year teaching. And ever since my first year, I've been the high school yearbook advisor at Baldwin Park High School. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so today our topic will be on yearbook sales. Um, so I'll give Destiny a few questions and Sarah will, of course, give her perspective working with so many different yearbook advisors and so many different schools. Um, so I like to do my questions kind of like from the perspective as an advisor, of Destiny. Um, so my first question for you is, I have too many leftover yearbooks. What can I do? In the past, we've held vintage sales where we promote them as vintage yearbooks and we go to the homecoming football games where there's typically a ton of alumni that come in and we sell them there. We've sold, we just, this week, we've sold some from 98. Once we have the vintage sale, people are aware of our inventory and what we have and how we do have most years available overstock. So they, they come, we bring out all the books, they take a look at them, they tell their family, they tell their friends that we have inventory available. So I would say that's our biggest push to sell overstock. That's so unique. I've never heard of anything like that. That's so fun. How are you able to kind of promote that to your student body? We typically send messages through Parent Square if we want to reach the whole community, um, all the parents, and then we make flyers, post them around campus, and then we just have a big group of kids selling at the homecoming game. As soon as you walk in, you see our table with vintage signs and um, people stop and look through, find their cousins, grandparents. That's so fun. Yeah, I'm sure they love seeing like the legacy of the school and everything like that. That's so cool. Uh, All the alumni that we had, some people, yeah. even oh, we know this person was famous. He went on to play football. We want to buy his book from the 60s. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so cool. That's so unique. I hope this gives a lot of advisors a new perspective of what they can do with their um, overstock yearbooks. Uh, Sarah, is there any kind of unique perspective that you can bring to the table with any of the other advisors you've worked with? Well, first of all, I'm very impressed by uh, Bowen Park High School vintage sales, selling the yearbook as a vintage novelty item that's so clever wow well i've seen other school they um uh, promote their leftover yearbooks um i would not use the word leftover because those are antique item collectibles so uh we started helping some school to sell those yearbook uh through online uh sales uh, perhaps bond park high school can consider that you know for next year so when we sell the current year yearbook, we'll also attach the link uh, to give um, the parents, student, or even even staff and faculty to purchase the previous year yearbooks. And we actually have some success helping other school to uh, sell yearbook um, from the previous years. That's awesome. Yeah, there's multiple ways to anyone listening that you can promote those maybe more vintage yearbooks. Um, so at this point in the year, I know deadlines are approaching, it's hectic. Um, what would you say are some marketing strategies that you can start implementing right now or that you've been implementing um, at this point in the year to really push those yearbook sales? To push sales, <clears throat> we have uh, morning announcements. So we make a short message in the morning announcements so the whole school is able to hear over the intercom. And then we also have parent square messages every other week regarding sales and senior ads. And then also we have a group of students. We have an intervention period during um, at our school. It's new this year, it's 30 minutes. So students can get caught up on any work they may need to, or you can work with your club during that time. So we have a group of students making class to class announcements and also have student students participating in the yearbook. They go around, um, and have students take surveys. So when students are involved in the process and they have something to look forward to when they buy the yearbook, like I know 
they interviewed me or I know I filled out this survey. And also social social media. Um, we have a really group, a great group of influencers this year in our group where they promote through social media, TikTok and Instagram. Oh, I'd love to hear more about your little influencers. Do they do um, like, do they have like, you have like a certain group and do they do like trends with the entire class? Do they go out and like get other people in the, the TikToks or Instagram posts as well? I'd love to hear more about that. Well, we have um, one social media um, girl who's the head and she knows a lot about social media. She actually runs her own business through social media. So um, she always is familiar with the trends and has our class participate in the trends and just does funny videos throughout the year with our staff. I love that. Yeah. Um, we had a blog earlier this year about social media and the power of using social media to market your yearbook and how a lot of yearbook advisors and their students are starting to really promote um, the yearbook through social media and, and, you know, making it fun as well. So like the students are having a fun time promoting the yearbook, but then a lot of the school is getting involved as well and in, in seeing their yearbook being promoted and like that online platform. So that's awesome that, that you have a, a head influencer in your classroom. Um, Sarah, what would you say are some of the marketing strategies you've seen them be successful at this point in the school year for yearbook sales? Um, I would say keep uh, instead of bi-weekly newsletter, uh, I've seen other school, they do it every uh, week on Friday and Sunday. That's when we see there's a surge of new order coming through our online stores because that's when parents are available on the weekend. You know, usually, you know, around after 5 p.m., then we'll see instant an increased number of new or orders uh, for uh, from different schools. So I, I would say, you know, just use every opportunity to make it easy uh, for the parents or students to be able to make the purchase online. Yeah, I feel like that goes hand in hand with um, my next question, which was getting parents' attention um, now for like final yearbook sales. And I know you mentioned Destiny about, I think it was called Parent Square. Um, is there any other kind of technology or any other um, tips that you could give advisors on how they could really get those parents' attention? Well, also on our campus, we have um, especially senior meetings for parent, parent senior meetings. And then we create a slide that we have the administration include in a PowerPoint. So we just create a sli slide regarding yearbook sales and um, a little hints about the theme. And then we include that in the parent slideshow. So it's presented when the parents come on campus. Okay, yeah, I f they're definitely a huge target audience. Uh, Sarah, what about you? How how do you think that parents can be approached and um, kind of talked to at this point in the year about your book sales? I remember I attended uh, a few parents' uh, event um, at Bourne Park High School um, when Ms. Malone was the yearbook advisor. It actually worked because parents showed up, majority of parents showed at the same time, and the school let us make an announcement, you know, after our presentation, um, to go to cashier to make the purchase. And sure enough, the parents will just follow the instruction after the presentation and uh, attending, you know, all the announcement, then they will be dismissed, you know, to line up at the cashier to make the yearbook purchase uh, right on the spot. So it's very, very effective because parents are, are there anyway. And also create an urgency, um, say, you know, once the yearbook are sold out, you know, we're not going to be able to print one or two copies, you know, just for the parents who were too late ordering the yearbook. Um, explain to them that uh, we print all the yearbook at the same time. Uh, once they're, they're sold out, there will be no more left. I remember, um, you know, um, when Bowen Park High School yearbook was sold out, you know, the parents were actually calling the, the main office uh, for, for yearbook. But that time, you know, all the yearbook were already gone, you know, they are not able to, um, to make the purchase. So create that urgency and create opportunity for your staff to connect with the parents and provide the instruction for them to place the, the order right on the spot, you know, at the cashier. 
Yeah, I like that, that sense of urgency, because it is an urgent matter. You know, you do want your students to have their, their hands on a yearbook for the year. Um, Dustin, you also mentioned earlier about, you know, getting surveys done and having those students involved in that way. Um, and I know sometimes students that aren't like seniors or freshmen, so specifically sophomore and juniors, sometimes are more hesitant to buy the yearbook. Um, what would you kind of give like a piece of advice to those yearbook advisors who are struggling with those grade levels and, and really getting um, them to purchase yearbooks and, and wanting and feeling like they're left out if they don't purchase a yearbook, you know? Just include them, make sure they're aware that they're being included in their yearbook, um, take their photo. I know one year we had um, a cover with everyone's photo and we were sure to especially get those who purchased a yearbook early we have a list of who purchased a yearbook and we made sure to get their photo and made sure they knew that it would be used for the yearbook as well. So just getting them involved. And um, the freshmen, it's nice to have a group of freshmen who, who are excited and had never had a yearbook as big as like middle school ones are so tiny, just a few pages. So when they see this yearbook, they do get really excited that it's so big and there's so many pictures. And just to try to get as many photos as possible. We get club photos. We have a club week where we take photos and a lot of underclassmen are in clubs. So we were able to let them know we take a we take a professional photo and then we take some candids and we send them the candids. And um, the professional one will be used in the yearbook. You can look forward to seeing it. This is how you purchased it as well. Yeah, I love that. Students just want to feel like they belong. You know, they love seeing themselves in the yearbook. So that's great advice. Uh, Sarah, what about you? What do you think is a good way to get students' attention? I remember um, there are like uh, several schools that I work with. They use this, um, they would create this little note and also create a list of students who have not purchased a yearbook. And on this little notes, they'll write down the number of pages, num number of times they actually appear in the yearbook and personally send a staff to approach them. Hey, you know, you are on this page, this page, this page, but you have not purchased the yearbook. Can I help you to, to get an order in before they're sold out? So, uh, which I thought, you know, it, you know, first you make the student feel very special, you know, that they do get noticed, you know, they haven't purchased a yearbook. I would say start with the seniors, um, contact the parents, um, your, your child is on this number of pages, they haven't purchased a yearbook and create that urgency. Once the yearbook is sold out, there will be no more. Can we uh, reserve an, uh, a copy for your child? So again, going back to the parents and, but this time, you know, create a note card and just have a yearbook staff, you know, to contact, make that personal contact with the parents or even with the student. I love that. I feel like sometimes students feel like they're just not going to be seen in the yearbook. Um, and so knowing, oh, you know, I'm on these pages, I actually am going to be seen, that, that gives them that reassurance. Um, so my next question is specifically about new yearbook advisors. Um, and so I know that being a new yearbook advisor is probably very scary and they're dealing with something, you know, that's completely new to them. What advice would you give to them as they're dealing with deadlines and they're trying to promote the yearbook um, to just kind of give them the space to, to promote the yearbook and kind of some guidelines of what you did when you were a new yearbook advisor? Well, when I was a new yearbook advisor, we had one returner and the rest was new staff. So we really had like a clean slate and we had to implement all these ideas. So we just made sure each kid had a role, knew their role and really just under like make the kids understand what their role is and guide them in that direction as well. Yeah. Um that's that's crazy. You had a clean slate completely. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it was nice because there wasn't too much input or like there wasn't too much pushback. Like we used to do things this way with one person. Um, it was nice. She just told us, gave us ideas on what to do, what not to do. She was very helpful and she was our editor in chief that year as well. So she also gave us a lot of direction on how things work. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's so crucial to have like those strong student leaders as well. 
um, and to also kind of remind yourself that sometimes you have to take your hands away from the book and let the students lead, right? Um, Sarah, what would you say to those new advisors who are feeling the pressure right now at this point in the year? I would say um, really through delegation, you know, student leaders really work, um, assign at least two st student leaders to help monitor the progress, the, the status, you know, of the pages, the book letter, and then let them, um, you know, run the show, you know, for advisors. When the advisor focus on advising, make sure everything is in progress and focus on grading, you know, because some people classes, a student received grade uh, based on uh, deadline and whether they meet all the criteria um, that required to complete the pages in the correct order and according to the instructions. I would say de delegation and really have that accountability system uh, in place meet regularly you know to check the progress on a weekly basis rather than you know days before the final deadline um so i think have a good system accountability in place is very crucial yeah 100 percent, i agree um and what piece of advice would um you give to advisors just in general they can be veteran or they can be new advisors um if they're feeling a lot of pressure right now Well, I'm glad United gives space where we can um, see which pages we need to redo. That's very helpful. And just know there will be mistakes, but just to focus um, on the, I, we also give like a little warning, like this was made by students. Um, so there's, there's room for mistakes, um, but just know that the kids really want to put out a good product as well because it goes back on them as well. So right now, even in our book, our book's due in a few days, but they're like, we don't like the way any of the backgrounds look. So right now they're fixing it. Um, they also want to, they're motivated to put out a good product. So it's nice that everyone is on the same page. No one wants to put out a bad product and they know that it's their responsibility as well. Yeah, that's very good. Um, in our first podcast episode, Lucy, our other guest star, she said that your homework is being put out to the entire school. And I'm sure the students really feel that and they take ownership of their work. So, you know, it's awesome to be able to see that and to see the final product and all of the work they've put in. Um, what about you, Sarah? What would you say to all advisors feeling that pressure right now? Well, do the best that you can. I um, mean, you know, there are situations that you, the student leaders or the student uh, maybe with system to finalize the page because they try to get a perfect page or a perfect yearbook. There's no such a thing of a perfect yearbook. Um, do the best that the student can and just let them, you know, finish the book uh, just as long as there are no major errors found. You know, there will always some imperfection, but we're going to have to, you know, live, live with them. And also knowing that this is the student product and they have done the best that they can. I would say take a deep, deep breath. You know, um, make sure that take a lot of breaks because when you're fresh, you'll be able to be more productive and to be able to to work more efficiently and also ability to catch some critical errors because there are times that when you're tired, when you're stressed out, you know, even after reviewing the book multiple times, you still find errors. But guess what? When you're well rested and relaxed, maybe have a a snack or take a walk or, or have the student to do group exercise. When you come back to the table, come back to a com computer after, you know, even a five, 10 minutes break, your mind will be refreshed and you'll be able to spot some critical mistake uh, before the submissions. I would say, um, yeah, just, just have a good balance of work, play and rest, um, even before the final submission deadline. Mm. That's a good reminder. I feel like um, sometimes people will get in their head that it's all like you got to get to the deadline and it's just work, work, work. Um, so, you know, set it, setting that time to breathe and to decompress is really important. Um, OK, well, does anyone have anything that they'd like to add to conclude um, the podcast today about your book sales? Thank you for having me today. And I'm so thankful for working with United and they make this process so much easier. And I love all the feedback they provide and all the 
tutorials that they're able to provide us as staff members and our students as well. Thank you so much, Destiny. We really appreciate you being here with us and making time during your busy, hectic season. Um, okay, well, that concludes our third episode. Thank you so much, everyone. And if you have any other comments, you can go ahead and leave them below and we'll get back to you at a later time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.